Assalamu alaikum, this is Dr. Hasna and today we will be studying the back of your chest or the back of your trunk. We have already studied the pectoral region that was lying front of your chest. Now we're going to go and see what happens on the back. This is a cross section of the spinal cord and this is where the spinal nerves begin. From posterior side of the cord come the sensory fibers and from anterior part the motor fibers these two together form, link up together and form the spinal nerve, which is divided into a ventral rami and a dorsal rami or posterior rami. The ventral rami and dorsal rami, the significance of this is that ventral rami supply the anterior part of the body, while the dorsal rami supply posterior part of the body. Keep in mind that the ventral rami is also responsible for supplying the limbs as the posterior rami do not supply the limbs, whether it is the back of the limbs, they do not. Okay, so now since we're talking about the back, the cutaneous innervation of the back is derived from the posterior primary rami. So the posterior primary rami of the nerves T1 to T12, L1 to L3, and the five sacral nerves, all of these give supply to the skin of the back. So each spinal nerve or each dorsal remind now will divide into a medial branch and a lateral branch. Up to the level of T6, the medial branches supply the skin. Below the level of T6, the lateral branches of these nerves supply the skin. So that's why you need to know about the cutaneous innervation of the back. Now let's talk about the muscles of the back. So these are the muscles of the back. Of them, the most important are the trapezius and latissimus torsi that we will see. They're the most important and the most prominent muscles of the back. Let's talk about the trapezius first. It is a diamond shaped muscle and it is the main muscle of the back. And the latissimus dorsi is mostly occupying the lower back. So this is the trapezius, while this is the latissimus dorsi. So let's talk a little about the two triangles of these muscles. There are two types of triangles we are going to talk about today. The first triangle is the triangle of auscultation. Why is it known as the triangle of auscultation? Let's go into the depth of this. So as we all know that this is the diamond shaped muscle or the trapezius muscle, all right? And we know that the latissimus dorsi is right here. And we also know that there is a scapula that is basically deep to the trapezius and you can see a little bit of it, the medial border of scapula is visible. Right over here, this is the triangle of auscultation. What muscle is this? Now, this is a muscle that gets inserted into the middle border of the scapula. If you remember, this is the rhomboid major muscle. So this triangle is bounded by, as we all know that this is the median, this is the vertebral column. So you all know that this is the median, this is where the median plane lies. So now you know, so you can see this is the medial part of the triangle. So the medial boundary of this triangle of auscultation is formed by the lateral border of the trapezius while the lateral border of this triangle is formed by the medial border of scapula and finally the inferior border of this triangle is bounded by the upper part or upper border of the latissimus dorsi the climber's muscle this tri triangle holds significance in that that there is no more muscles except for just uh, the rhomboid major attached here. Hence, this area is where the doctor will keep his stethoscope to be able to hear the lungs or if it's on the left side, then to be able to hear the gastric sounds as this is an area where there is lack of layers. If you keep it here, there's trapezius, then there are deep muscles and more muscles. However, over here, it's just the rhomboid major and even deep to that, there is the sixth and seventh rib with their sixth intercostal space. So that was the triangle of auscultation. Now we have another triangle, the lumbar triangle of petite. 
So this triangle is also a very small triangle. Now it is located right here. So this is the hip bone and this is the iliac crest part of the hip bone. So the inferior boundary of this triangle is formed by the iliac crest of the hip bone. And the medial, the, since we all know that this is the vertebral column and the median plane, hence this is the medial border. It is formed by the lateral border of the latissimus dorsi muscle. And there is a muscle that comes behind from the front. This is the muscle of the front of abdomen going behind. So the posterior border of this muscle called the external oblique forms the lateral boundary of this tiny triangle. Now, what is the significance of this triangle? This is an area of weakness through which a hernia may protrude out. So this is where most of the lumbar hernias occur. So that's all you need to know about these triangles. Thank you so much for watching.